It's Lisa here with an edition of Sacred Woman Wednesday. And on this Sacred Woman Wednesday, we're actually going to be talking about Vesta, the Roman goddess of hearth and home. She's also affiliated with uh, Greek goddess Hestia. So oftentimes in Greek and Roman mythology, the gods and goddesses were kind of interchangeable with different names. But Vesta is kind of interesting. In Roman, in Roman times, she was the first born daughter of uh, Roman Titan Kronos and his wife Rhea. And um, for whatever reason, <laughs> Kronos decided to swallow all of his kids. So <laughs> she has the first born daughter. She was actually swallowed first by Kronos. And when Jupiter came along and evaded being swallowed, he was actually able to rescue the rest of his siblings. So she was the first in, but the last out. So she's also been considered the oldest child of Kronos and Rhea and also the youngest because she was the last one out. So one of the things about Vesta, though, is that she was quite beautiful and caught the attention of the Roman god Apollo, who was the uh, Roman god of the sun, and also um, the god Neptune of the sea. And they were both kind of uh, smitten with her and vying for her attention. And quite frankly, she really didn't want to have anything to do with either one of them. <laughs> so she asked, actually, if she could just remain single and not have to give in to any man and remain single. And she was given that opportunity. And so um, in return, she offered to basically oversee hearth and home um, for Roman civilization. And she remained single throughout her entire life. Now, one thing that's interesting about Vesta is that she is the only deity in the entire Roman pantheon that actually had full-time clergy dedicated to um, helping with her rites and rituals. There was a sacred fire in the middle of Rome that was, um, that burned perpetually. And this was a place where people within Rome could come and actually get fire, you know, to take, um, to use, but there was a group of um, what were then called the Vestal Virgins that were dedicated to making sure that that fire continued burning and dedicated to the support and perpetuation and continuation and honoring of the um, of Vesta and of what she did for not only hearth and home, but also for the community and care within the community. Now, a lot of folks hear Vestal Virgin and think this has something to do with having or not having sex. And quite frankly, for a lot of a lot of history and a lot of society, that's that's the way it's been seen. But the way I've come to understand the Vestal Virgins is that it really has absolutely nothing to do with having an intact hymen or never having done the deed, but actually has more to do with not actually being beholden to anyone else. The Vestal Virgins were sovereign in their own power. They were beholden to themselves. And in that, that was their way of also honoring the goddess that they were that they were serving as well. Now, the Vestal Virgins, their job, as I had mentioned, was keeping that sacred flame lit, keeping that sacred flame going. But they also were considered keepers of the secrets. So the inner flame of knowledge and the understanding of spiritual information and spiritual knowledge, enlightenment, that, that flame, that they were keepers of that wisdom as well. So as a result, they were actually highly revered within the community at the time, within the civilization, as confidants, as advisors, as wise, um, as wise counselors to the people in power, the people in charge, others within the community, because they did have access to um, so much deep wisdom and knowledge that was actually quite beneficial and useful for, for the community at the time. Um, now, Vesta and Hestia, you know, in their, both the Roman and the Greek um, communities, there was a great deal of, of worship of them and to them, you know, many of the households within, within the Roman community, for example, would have an altar specifically to Vesta, um, honoring her in a way to keep the family, to keep the home safe, to, and especially to bring tranquility and peace within the home itself. And so today, as I've moved back, you know, into my home, um, setting up shop again here in, in my home, it just felt right to bring Vesta into the conversation, um, an opportunity to honor that hearth and home, that idea and concept of domestic tranquility, and also the idea of, of keeping the sacred flame lit 
keeping those that sacred wisdom and that deeper insight perpetuated and going um, within each and every one of us. It's not something that's just the purview of, you know, the gods and goddesses, but when we really look deep inside that we are actually the hearth and home within our temple as well to that kind of wisdom. And we had the opportunity for that kind of sovereignty within our own understanding of spiritual truths. Now, obviously we don't hear a whole lot about Vesta <laughs> anymore in, in society. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, what was it? Uh, about the year 394, um, Christian Emperor Theodosius decided that all the pagan, what they considered to be the pagan traditions, pagan rituals, pagan deities were going to be extinguished and no longer observed and followed. And at that time, the sacred flame of Vesta was extinguished as well within the, uh, within the temple, within the shrine there in Rome. And so, a, you know, a whole new set of um, traditions and rituals were implemented instead. But that doesn't mean that we can't look back throughout history and look at um, the historical significance of some of these sacred women, the power that they held, the importance that they held within their own communities, the truths that they were the keepers of, and bring some of that back into our daily lives. So your home, your house, whether it's the house or this house, either one. You wanna bring more tranquility, more ease, more peace into your home, you might consider you know, learning more about Vesta and that sacred flame, that sacred fire. Um, and also the idea of being sovereign in your own search for the sacred and the divine as well. So on this Sacred Woman Wednesday, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I look forward to talking with you again. See ya.